Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Conversations with Coaches podcast. I'm your host, Kevin, and I got to tell you, I'm already just beside myself with delight to get to introduce you to and to get to, to know more about Ken Jensen. He is, we've been chatting before I hit record, and I got to tell you, it's just, it's a temptation to just keep him on the Zoom all day. It's a temptation to just hit record, never stop recording. It's a temptation to just stop recording and then just start a different conversation. I cannot wait to share a little bit of him with you and to just get a little bit more of him myself. Let me give you, let me introduce you. Give me a, the tiniest, tiniest taste of who Ken Jensen is. He is an author, life coach, Marine Gulf War vet, former addict and alcoholic, and former bipolar sufferer. He's even been dead a few times and survived two comas, which I both would love to get into. And also we're here for different purposes. So that's just there for you to understand about some of, some of what makes up Ken's life. In 2004, he turned all that around, including addressing his bipolar disorder without meds. And now he helps other trauma survivors create small businesses to share their stories. There is so much more to Ken than even that can contain. And that was a heck of a paragraph. Ken, thank you for being here today. Thanks for sharing some time and some stories with me and with my audience. And I'm just excited to get to know you. Thank you very much, Kevin. Uh, I feel warmly welcomed, and I, I, I already wish we were neighbors. <laughs> I can't wait. Oh, I, I hope we stay in touch and do something again later. And uh, just thank you very much for ha for having me. I know we were just getting started with the like actual recorded episode. I can already tell that I'm going to like be coming back as soon as I can responsibly come back to you and be like, let's do a part two and make it longer. I can already tell I'm going to want that. So there's no, there's no doubt we'll be talking again. <laughs> So let's go, well, okay. <laughs> it's even more so than usual, this question is kind of loaded because I usually say something to the effect of, let's go back to the beginning. We don't have that kind of time. <laughs> I don't know if anybody <laughs> has that kind of time, but let's go back to, I don't know, maybe not the beginning, but like the origin story of your of yourself, of your life as a coach in particular. How did you come to the realization or the decision to apply your gifts, your life story, your impact, all your skills, to something like coaching, to helping other people to to get through something, to develop something, to grow into the person they want to be, and have the kind of impact that they want to have in their lives. How did you How did you come to that decision and realization? It didn't come fast. It, this has been decades long. Um, I've had over fifty jobs with a W two. Mm -hmm. I pretty much learned years ago if I can dance my way through the interview, the jobs moot. I'll figure that out in a minute. I'll make the right friends. I'll learn what I got to, and I'll have it. Then I'll get bored and quit. That became clear too. And <laughs> in an attempt to find out what my career path was many years ago, you look for that common thread. The only common thread I could see was that people seemed drawn to me. I always had the best stories, whether I wanted to be that guy or not. People felt free to dump their problems in my lap. And usually they were quite severe problems. Even when I was a complete mess, they'd still come to me with their problems. I was trying to find a job that would let me use that side of my personality. I never did. I never did find a job that did that. And in the middle of my brain just melted down with bipolar. And that that's, I literally wrote a book on that. It was, it was just <laughs> incredible what I went through and how I came out of it. <laughs> but at some point I hired a coach and uh, who I've been following for years. And I told him, I said, I don't know what I am. I just know people want me around and they feel better when they're talking to me, but there's never really a focus, but I care that, that I handle it right. Hmm. I'm like, what the hell is that? And he was like, I don't quite know just yet, but he's like, what do you feel your greatest impact is? I said, it's when I'm talking to people. He said, podcast, start podcasting. That was three podcasts ago. I've had more coaching from him and other coaches. And, uh, and final, uh, oddly enough, as I was being coached, I still didn't know that I, I never heard of a, I didn't know what a life coach was. And I finally went and got certified for it. I don't remember this, nothing out of the six month course, except <laughs> this one lesson. It <laughs> was where I learned the difference between therapy and coaching. I'd never heard <laughs> it till this course. I was being treated by a therapist, which I cared to do well, but I wasn't certified in it and it drained me. And I, and once they showed me the difference, I could see how I coached other people to great heights and that energized me to no end. And I wanted to be with them more, no matter what they were doing. And then, I, then everything came together. Even as I was getting certified as a life coach, the title struck me as too corny, but mm -hmm. then I embraced it once I realized what the difference was. And then, um, started going through iterations till I got till now. Now I help other trauma survivors tell their, build an uh, online business to tell their story so that they get the greatest reach, have the life they want for doing it. It's what I'm doing. I love that. 
I love that. And like, you're right. Like it's just like so, so, certain terms just carry some weird baggage with it. Like the term life coach doesn't exactly have the best baggage that comes with it, but it, but it really does like, it's a good place to start. And I love that you didn't let that like, that refer like push you away from starting there and be like, oh, look, I, I am understanding what this is now. I don't care what it's called or how people have used the term in the past, present or future. I'm going to use this term and I'm going to allow, uh, use this sort of framework to kind of get into how I want to help people, how I want to share this, share my, share my stories with people, share my impact with people and really help them get through. And I just love that you just like, I mean, I'm, I'm completely unsurprised that you didn't let something like that get in your way. I, I, you strike me as the kind of man who has not let very much get in the way of the things that he realizes are important in life. <laughs> no, no. Uh, ex things external to me just got easier and easier and easier to overcome. And then it got clearer to me the longer I tried to do this job better. I'm always going to be the biggest thing in my way. So <laughs> then the job became if something went sideways or got a little wiggly, didn't land like I thought it would, would. I would quickly pick that apart and see how to improve or, or if I even agreed with what I just did, because we do a lot of things mm -hmm. on autopilot mm -hmm. uh, you, uh, frequently for the best of intentions. And because it always worked up till now <laughs> and then things don't work because something's changed. And, and so now, now I take pride in catching myself faster. You're not always even wrong. You could, but you could be better and, mm -hmm. and you change or something changes to where you have to be better if you want to stick with this as a career and do no harm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Wrong is really easy to get caught up on because it's, 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 it's it seems definitive. Not, in, I'm not interested in that anymore. And I'm, I'm, I'm actually actively disinterested in that. What I'm interested in is, is did it work like I wanted it to, did it work well? What, what were the results and how could they be better? And just like, it's I just, agree. it's whether or not it seems on by every metric you can see wildly successful or by every metric you can see and measure it just, it, catastrophically failed or anywhere in between i want that to be my next set of questions why did this work why didn't this work how didn't this work what was my role in it what could my role in it be all sorts of like interesting questions that lead to the next questions that let me get better and work more effectively and grow not just for myself but with the people i'm working with it's just it's really it's just it's what gets me out of bed in the morning. I used to be looking for answers and now I just want more questions. I want more work with people. I want to keep growing and going, you know? Yeah, totally. Yeah, and the better Sorry, we I get at it. I didn't ask a question there. I just kind of cut it off. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and the better we get at that, I find we start getting our wish, whether spoken out loud or not, we start drawing the people to us that we want to have around us. Hmm. Even if we haven't gotten to where we want to get yet, you start – you can see them coming. You can smell it in the air. You know, different people <laughs> show up and the conversations change a little and you realize like, I'm doing something right here to get what I need out of this. And and it, you just get a sense that you're handling yourself well. Yeah. If you really are putting yourself out there like that and like you are right, you do, you really do start to attract not just the people, but the opportunities that kind of come yes. along with that. And it's like, it's, it's, it can be hard to, for lack of a better word, quantify, but you can feel it. You really can feel it. And that feeling comes from all the work you've been doing and are continuing to do. It doesn't come from nowhere. You've been developing the skills and processing, you know, your internal and external work. And it's like that feeling does come from somewhere, but it's the feeling that guides you that you can learn to trust. And then it's just, it's just there's no better North Star for knowing that you're on the right path. Yeah, I agree. I want to talk a little bit. Cause I'm looking up at the zoom clock, making sure I keep, I keep this conversation on rails. Cause there's just, I, I, I have, there's like a dozen different jumping off points. I would love <laughs> to just talk about for another hour or two, but I want to talk a little bit about your, your coaching business in particular. Um, and I usually ask this kind of as a two parter to try to try to get at the heart of what the coaching business really is for you. Who do you coach and how do you coach them is what I usually ask. And you've kind of already talked about this a little bit, but the who is really what, I say kinds of people do you focus on? Like, are there certain age groups or demographics, certain kinds of entrepreneurs or business owners? Um, anything, any, anything that you particularly focus on there? And then the how being more about the sort of coaching techniques you deploy, like a one-to-one, a -one, uh, small group or medium-sized group, like mastermind kind of groups. Do you do any sort of coursework that you construct and run keynote speeches or anything like that? Do you, I mean, obviously you've written a book. Do you, I mean, do you continue to write for, for different publications or for yourself, all of the above? I mean, obviously there's so many different ways to reach people, but how do you, who do you coach and how do you coach them these days? Well, this, this iteration is in its early growth stages. So hmm. I have a, I have a, 
there's two different main offerings I have. One is for anybody that has um just one thing we need to solve and we just focus on that one thing. The other one's it's month to month, but it's long term. It's people with a vision and it can either be people that are brand new that realize they want to they want to be heard, they want to be taken serious, they want credibility, they want to make big change in the world and they want to get paid well to do it. They don't want to be martyrs and you can't hmm. And I, I stress to people, if you really want to do the greatest amount of work with your story, you got to get paid to do it for a number of reasons. And you will help more people, way more people than doing this from a soapbox on the intersection. Mm -hmm. And I also help current business owners because this is, again, this is the interesting thing I found out about myself over the years. One time I got pulled into a room of millionaires. I did the story of how I was even in that room or near it is too long to tell. Hmm. But a business owner told me, he's like, you need to be at that table. And this is before I knew anything about myself. I'm like, why? He goes, you just need to sit and learn and watch what's happening in here. Nothing ever went further with him and I or that room. But I felt like he knew something down the road. He was a teacher. He knew hmm. I needed to see something that I think he even knew I was going to use anytime soon. I don't need to know anywhere is near anything much about the people I help. They just need someone that'll talk to them straight who cares and helps them sort through their issues and hear what it is that's really bothering them because they'll they'll frequently think it's the surface thing. It's usually <laughs> something much deeper. If I can mm -hmm. help them unearth it, look at themselves a little differently. I'm big on changing perspectives and reframing. Mm. They suddenly get it in them to do the stuff that I don't even have a clue or half understand because I don't need to. They just I just keep them moving to what they do. And then I want to be in some fashion brought along, not not on. I just want to be involved. I want that mm -hmm. to be my network of people. I've had it before, but this is the most professional attack on creating that that I've ever done. Right now, I coach people one on one and I use a mix. I still have a day job and I work with the mentally ill and the addicted. And it is draining. It is draining even on good days because to remain present, you probably know this just from doing podcasts, to remain mm -hmm. present and give and keep your heart out there, but protect yourself, mm -hmm. you're drained. Mm -hmm. So to my lack of time and my lack of energy, um, thank God the internet invented asynchronous coaching software. <laughs> I discovered that not long ago. So I can do like texting coaching with people through the week, then do live one-on-ones with them on the weekend because you, you have to do that as well. And that's, that's, um, that's really the gist of it. Then I offer, I got three courses on my site right now. Each of them, one's really a, a massive resource guide. The other two are what happened. It's a wellness guide. It's how I beat bipolar, but it can be used for anything to help people improve their health, to, to improve their entire lives. And the mm -hmm. other thing is the more ethereal, the abstract, okay, you're all right, but you want to do something. How might, how do you got to look at things to do something? And that's that's like my whole business right now. Yeah, well, it's, it's, I, I want to sink my teeth into so much of that. There's a couple of things that you said that I wanted to I wanted to shine some extra light on. There's one in particular, and this one's a really hard one for a lot of, especially like coaches or just people who who are looking to give back and like serve others. It's something really hard for people to internalize and really put into their business. You're, it's important that you be focused on making money. It's important that you understand that. Getting like, you know, building a business and making an income and being satisfied, it's it's almost not even so much about you. It's important that you get, I mean, I'm going to use this term and it sounds like I'm making a pun, but I'm not. I mean it. It's important that you get buy-in from the people you're trying to help, the people that you're serving. And if you're just out there up on your soapbox and just kind of throwing your message out there, it could be it's could literally be falling on deaf ears, even if it's people who really need to hear what you're what you're saying, what you're putting out there. And what the what the investment these people make in you indicates is that not only are they willing to listen, they're ready to invest in listening. They're ready to invest in the kind of change they want to see in their life. And you really you can't you really can't coach anybody that's not ready. You can't force someone into that position. They kind of have to be up to a certain level of readiness. You must be this high to ride. I'm remembering from all those old carnivals <laughs> I used to go to as a kid. There's a, there's a certain degree of readiness you just have to have if you're going to be able to, to work with each other and if you're going to be able to help, help someone. And it's just, it's, that's really hard for a lot of coaches, a lot of business owners to internalize. And it's, it's just, it's, it's for a lot of other reasons that we, again, we don't even have nearly enough time to get into. It's just so important. And I'm so glad you called that out. It's just, it's so vital. And so many coaches and business owners trip on that. And 
also, I love the way that you largely acknowledge that you're not really doing a whole lot and doing, but you're not, you're doing so much by not really doing very much at all. Cause you understand like, like every good coach I've talked to does that most of the, the hard work, the heavy work, the big change is going to come from inside the person that you're coaching. You just need to get there with them, shoot it to them straight, you know, hold that space with them, give them the space, you know, remove, let, let some obstacles kind of move into the center and then like, you know, help someone to kind of get those obstacles out of the way. And it's just, it's really about guidance. You know, you're not really like throwing your 27 step system to health, wealth, and happiness into, and trying to stuff it into somebody's life. It's going to be there and just, it's just talk with them. And I know it's, it's, it's very reductive to say it that way, but it's also, it's, it's the heart of it. You're just really there connecting with people, building the relationship, holding the space for them, letting them talk, listening to them, giving it back to them straight and just, just going from there. And it's just, it's so, it's so simple and so powerful. And I just, I love, I love the way that you frame it and the way that you execute it in your, in your life, and your business. Oh, I appreciate it. Yeah. My job, um, I tend to do the job with my coworkers. My coworkers, we're all peers. We're literally called peers. And everybody has to have, most of the people I work with, you have to have been through something before you can get hired. Otherwise, mm -hmm. how can you understand the clients? Mm -hmm. And um, I I routinely have coworkers coming to me with everything. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's an honor. And I, of course, I like them and I care about some of them greatly. And I take it very seriously that they're trusting me. And it, mm -hmm. it's, um, like I said, a lot of what I get hit with is therapy, which is hard for me. And yet coaching and therapy are almost the same thing. There's like a, like, it's like a one, it's like two thirds, three quarters. They're the same thing. And then that last chunk is where they, they differentiate. Mm -hmm. And, and a lot of it's really just listening. And I love talking. It, it's, I always have to fight to not over, over speak and I'm getting better at it. And, and, um, <laughs> I, I don't know how to say this without sounding egotistical. I'm going to keep it vague. I get paid very, very nice comments on a large scale, particularly where I work at, to the point that it's noticeable to me, like, how am I blowing up this big? I don't even know a lot of these people because there's too many of them in the building. I can't remember who they are if I've even seen them. <laughs> and certain people, I keep getting commented on how on uh, complimented on how well I listen. Hmm. And it, it it makes me laugh because like I had told you before we started, the little micro bubbles of awareness, It's it, you just said it. It's that damn mm -hmm. simple. It's not easy. And we've got to rein ourselves in. And as coaches, we got so much help and advice. We got, you know, you're going to just, like you said, you're going to cram it down their throat or you're going to vomit or run away from you. <laughs> and you just sit and listen. And I realize, and it, it's a relief. I realize hmm. most of this is just listening. And then waiting for them and giving them little tiny conversational nudges and pointing a couple of things out and waiting for that moment when you realize you can take them by the hand and run up, run up to the next plateau, up the mountain. Hmm. You just got to be patient. And it, it requires all this listening. And I now now I'm kind of getting off on the hunt of waiting for the <laughs> let's run for the plateau moment. And it hmm. only comes by shutting down everything about me that's big and loud and bold and being quiet <laughs> and listening, which is really hard, but I, I do it. And, and now, so now it's like, I'm, I'm, I'm digging the, the mastery of, can I contain myself long enough for this person to reach? <laughs> Are we doing this? Are we running? Let's run. You know, and then I grab like, yeah, let's go. You're a freak. Let's go. And we run. But you gotta, you gotta cultivate that into being. Mm -hmm. And we have to hold so much of ourselves back until they're ready for that side of us to show up. But then, but then when it comes, then you've got to lead and mm -hmm. you've got to be loud and strong about it because now they've pinned all their hopes on you to some degree to take care of them. Now you have to follow through on what you promised that you were so patiently waiting for it to arrive. Now mm -hmm. it's on you. You get to the next plateau and you begin again. You let them soak. It, it just cycles. Mm -hmm. it, it's 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 a beautiful cycle it's a beautiful circle and it's like it's really it's that restraint leading up to that moment of exuberance and i just i love in my head it's like it is that that's the perfect you put the image right into my head of just running up you know hand in hand to that next plateau and all the work that went into getting ready for that it's just there, there's in my head, I'm like, I'm seeing the sun on the horizon and I'm feeling the wind as we're going up the hill. Like, it really is like the perfect way to describe it because that's what it feels like. It is just an exuberant celebration, even as it is just like a giant leap forward. And it's like, it takes it takes that patience. It takes that that restraint, that quiet work 
and then you just kind of keep you start you get you start getting excited because you know you're hunting you've got your hunter's eye on <laughs> and you can see that it's it's close it's it's really close you could feel it you start you're almost like inside you're trying obviously you're trying not to do it outside but you're almost like bouncing on the balls of your feet you yeah. feel it coming oh there's just nothing like it it really no isn't. there it's, isn't oh, i love it man i could i could talk to you all day this is just i'm like <laughs> i need to go i need to go outside and go for a run or a walk or something now but before I let you go, and I'm I'm going to very, very, very reluctantly let you go for now, and then very, very, very soon, and I'm going to have you back on for another, like a part yes, two, please. a little longer. Where where can people just learn more about you, who you are, what you do, how you do, just learn more about you? And also, if it's different, where can people best connect with you if they wanted to reach out and start a relationship, maybe see about you know joining one of your coaching programs, anything like that? Well, my website, uh, BipolarExcellence.com, it's got the podcast, it's got the newsletter. I give away the wellness program right now, the whole program. I don't know if that'll remain that way. Not, I, I, I might just give something way simpler just to get the ball rolling somewhere down the road. But right now, you get the entire program. And then once you're on the newsletter, you'll always be able to find me. But you have the podcast and whatever else I might create is all on BipolarExcellence.com. And I'm getting ready to do a massive... Um, I'm about to take over LinkedIn with Justin Welch's help. <laughs> I bought Ooh. both his programs and uh -huh. they resonated with me. Something serious. I'm on my third go through. It takes me a while to get my head around some things. And now I got it. Now, 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 now I'm getting ready to run myself up that hill. So that's, LinkedIn, I, I'm going to get very loud on LinkedIn. That's excellent. That's excellent. And, and, and you are in good hands with, with Justin Welch. That's, that is that is that that's I mean it's not quite the gold standard. It's in my opinion, it's pretty much the gold standard for if you really if you really want to if you want to jumpstart your your LinkedIn presence and it's the place to be. It's like it's it's the least it's the least noisy of yes. all the social media platforms, and so the signal is clearer. And I'm able like I'm genuinely able to make real connections and build relationships there, which is not something I've been able to say about other social media platforms right. for a long time. So <laughs> no, I don't want to be on the other ones. I'm, I'll be on Twitter as well, but, but I will be focused on business, but on LinkedIn, I only got serious with LinkedIn early in this spring. Cause I'm like, that's where the adults play. I got to come, I got to come ready. <laughs> and I just didn't feel ready until this spring. And again, it's like we were saying earlier before the, we, we began recording. It's like, there's, there's certain things in life that I am not afraid of. And I've overcome that would terrify people that are nothing to me. <laughs> and yet, quivering in my boots a little to go put my profile live on LinkedIn. It's ridiculous, but I wanted to be ready. And like you said, I like LinkedIn because it's adult and everybody, the underpinning, we're here to do business in one way, shape or form. That's why we chose LinkedIn. You can mm -hmm. still have fan. You still have comp, um, fantastic, warm conversations and you make really cool friends, which mm -hmm. I want. I, I want that. I want that awesome network of, of, of achiever, achievers. And I, I can't, I know that, I learned that LinkedIn is relatively untouched and that they are desperate for content. Mm -hmm. So right now, people, if you're listening and you're serious about getting found and heard and grow, you can own LinkedIn. It's the wild west and they are glad to have you. That is not going to remain the same for long. No, Look well, at me no plugging LinkedIn. I'm not even a rep. <laughs> <laughs> it's like this is not a paid promotion. This is just this two, is not. two LinkedIn lovers just really just, just espousing the platform. <laughs> You're the best, Kevin. This is uh this is ridiculous. I wish we were I wish we were porch friends. Uh, I cannot tell you. I I would yeah. That that put that put a light in my heart that I can't even describe. So I'm just thinking right now because it'd be so great. Just be on the porch with a with a cold one, just watching watching the world go by. But for now, I'm gonna for very, now. very reluctantly I'm gonna heave a sigh and say goodbye. Thank you. I just thank you. Thank you for being here and talking with me and sharing some time. And thank you for being who you are and doing what you do and just growing and evolving. And just, yeah, just thank you for being you. I know it's corny. It's, corny. it's almost as corny as life coach, but I embrace it. Thank you for being you and for sharing just a tiny bit of your, of your day and your life with me today. I just, I'm, I'm immensely grateful. I'm, I feel the same about you, which sounds trite and, and but it's not, it's <laughs> you're the kind of people I, 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 I did draw you to me. That's my point. I want friends like you. So thank you, Kevin, for the same reasons. That's excellent. And hey, to, to the to the audience listening out there, I if you if you feel like the tiniest sliver as 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 delighted and joyful and inspired as I do, then go go out and work with it. Reach out to Ken, connect on LinkedIn and just start a conversation. You won't be sorry. And thank you for sharing some time with us here today and We'll be so grateful to share a little bit more time with Ken and with other coaches 
very, very, very soon. So thank you.